The Wild Robot, Words and Pictures by Peter Brown, read today with permission from Little Brown and Company, Chapter 14, The Bears. Roz stomped into the cave, and then she stomped right back out. Please stay away, said the robot to the two bears who were now nipping at her heels. You see, when Roz stomped into the cave, she accidentally woke a brother and sister bear from their morning nap, which is never a good idea. And to make matters worse, the bears have an instinct that drives them to attack when a creature runs away, especially if the creature running is a mysterious, sparkling robot. So, as the startled bears watched Roz stomping out of their cave, they really had no choice at all. They simply had to take up the chase. Roz tried her best to outrun the bears. She leapt over rocks and wove through trees and stomped across the mountainside at full speed. But the bears were young and strong and fast. And the robot still had so much to learn about moving through the wilderness. She never even saw the tree root. One moment she was stomping along. Next moment she was flying through the air and thumping down onto a rotten log. Clumps of soft wood stuck to her side as she stood and faced her attackers. Wouldn't you be afraid if two bears were charging towards you? Of course you would. Everyone would. Even the robot felt something like fear. Roz was programmed to take care of herself. She was programmed to stay alive. Bears and or watch those bears charging toward her. She knew her life was in serious danger. The bear slammed into Roz, knocking her against the trunk of a towering tree. Then one bear dove at her legs and the other clawed at her chest. If only the robot had swung her fist or ki kicked her feet, she could have scared them off. One good bop on the nose would have sent them running, but the, but the robot's programming would not allow her to be violent. Clearly, Roz was not designed to fight bears. Powerful jaws chomped on her arms, sharp claws slashed at her face, a massive hand rammed her chest. Please stay away, said the robot. Roar, said the sister bear. Grrr, said the brother bear. And the bears went in for the kill. But the robot had vanished. Chapter 15, The Escape. Using all the strength in her legs, Roz jumped straight up high into the air and landed on a tree branch overhead. The tree shook with the sudden weight of the robot, and then thunk, thunk. Two pine cones bounced off Roz, and in a moment later, thunk, thunk. The same pine cones bounced off the bears below. The bears grunted in annoyance. This gave Roz an idea. The robot's programming stopped her from being violent, but nothing stopped her from being annoying. So Roz plucked pine cones from the nearby branches and lobbed them down at the bears. Dunk, 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 dunk. Each pine cone bounced off its target with annoying accuracy and whipped the young bears into a fray. said the sister bear. Grrr, said brother bear. I do not understand you, bears, said the robot. Roz was about to unload a whole armful of annoying pine cones when a distant roar echoed through the forest. Back at the cave, the mother bear was calling for these two, and she did not sound happy. The young bears looked at each other. They knew they were in trouble. Before lumbering home, they glared at Roz and snorted one last time. More than anything, they wanted to kill the robot. Chapter 16, The Pine Tree. Roz was in no hurry to leave the tree. She stayed on her branch long after the bears had gone, enjoying some peace and looking, over, looking herself over. In addition to bite marks and claw marks, the robot was also covered in dirt, which of course meant 
it was time for another cleaning. She was making good progress when she felt something sticky on her arm. The problem with sitting in a pine tree is that eventually the tree's sticky resin will find you. It always does. It found Roz. The robot scrubbed and scraped at the resin, and soon her fingers were completely coated in the sticky stuff. Then it was all over her arms and her legs and her torso. And things were about to get even messier. A robin swooped into the tree and began screeching and fluttering around Roz. The bird had recently finished building herself a new nest. It was a little work of art, a delicate basket woven from grass and twigs and feathers, and it was right above the robot's head. Screech! Screech! said the robin. I do not understand you, robin, said the robot. The robin continued screeching and fluttering and then splat. She splattered her droppings across the robot's face. This bird was serious. So Roz scooted away farther out on the branch until she heard a quick, sharp crack. Before Roz knew what was happening, the tree branch snapped under her weight and she went crashing to the forest floor. She hit the ground hard and lay as broken branches and pine cones and needles showered down on top of her. There was another splat and then quiet returned to the forest. Chapter 17, The Camouflaged Insect. Roz was a mess. She lay under the tree covered in a heap of broken branches and pine cones and needles. She still hadn't removed the sticky resin from her body. And then there were bird droppings. She was about to get up and give herself a rigorous cleaning when she noticed a peculiar twig. The twig was moving. It was crawling along one of the broken branches on the ground. With a gentle touch, the robot picked up the twig. Hello, stick insect. My name is Roz. You are very well camouflaged. The stick insect's body was long and thin. He had the same shape and color and markings as a real twig. But if you look closely, you just might see two tiny eyes and two spindly antenna. The insect didn't make a sound and he sat perfectly still, as still as the robot. The two of them sat still and silently stared at each other for a while. Thank you, stick insect, said Roz as she placed him back where she found him. You have taught me an important lesson. I can see how camouflage helps you survive. Perhaps it could help me survive also. Chapter 18, The Camouflaged Robot. As you know, reader, Roz had always liked to keep herself as clean as possible, but her desire to stay alive was stronger than her desire to stay clean. And our robot decided it was time she got dirty. Roz was going to camouflage herself. She'd gotten the idea from the stick insect, but Roz quickly realized that camouflaging herself as a twig on the ground was out of the question. No, the robot would have to blend into the landscape itself. She began by smearing handfuls of thick mud over her entire body. She then plucked ferns and grasses from the ground and sank their roots into her new muddy coating. She placed colorful flowers around her face to disguise her glowing eyes. And bare patches were covered with tree leaves and strips of moss. Our new robot looked like a great tuft of plants walking through the forest. She waited for darkness, and then she padded to the center of the clearing, nestled herself between some rocks, and became part of the landscape. A few hours later, the sky was brightening, the fog was lifting, the nighttime animals were slinking home, and the daytime animals were beginning to stir. It was just an ordinary morning on the island. 
However, there was that new tuft of plants in that one forest clearing. Only the bees had noticed the tuft. They buzzed around it, completely unaware the, that the robot was hidden beneath. And so Ra sat there, right in the open, yet completely unseen, and observed the wilderness around her. She watched flowers slowly turn toward the sun. She listened to rodents crawl through the weeds. She smelled the moist, piney air. She felt worms wiggle against her muddy sides. And a week later, the tuft of plants was gone, but there was a new clump of seaweed on the shore. A week after that, the clump of seaweed was gone, but there was a new bramble on the mountain. And there was a new log on the riverbank. And then there was a new rock in the forest. Chapter 19 observations. Clouds scuttled through the sky. Spiders spun intricate webs. Berries beckoned to hungry mouths. Fox stalked hares. Mushrooms rose up from leaf litter. Turtles plopped into ponds. Moss spread across tree roots. Vultures hunched over carcasses. Ocean waves beat against the coastline. Tadpoles became frogs, caterpillars became butterflies, and a camouflaged robot observed it all. Chapter 20, The Language of the Animals. It started with the birds. They had always been skinnish when a robot was near. They would stare and screech and then scatter. But now that Roz was camouflaged, she could secretly observe their normal behavior right up close. Roz noticed chickadees fluttering through the same flowers and singing the same song every morning. She noticed a lark who swooped down to the same rock and sang the same song every afternoon. She noticed the same two magpies singing to each other from across the same meadow every evening. After weeks of robotically studying the birds, Roz knew that each bird would sing and when they would sing, and eventually why they would sing. The robot was beginning to understand the birds, but she was also beginning to understand the porcupines and the salamanders and the beetles. She discovered that all different animals shared one common language. They just spoke the language in different ways. I might say each species spoke with its own unique accent. When Roz first listened to the chickadees, their song sounded like twee tweedle, twee tweedle. But now when the chickadees sang, Roz heard, oh, what a lovely day it is. Oh, what a lovely day it is. Deer spoke mostly with their bodies. By simply turning their head, a doe could say to her family, let's look for some clovers by the stream. Snakes often hissed to themselves, things like, I know there's a tasty mouse around here somewhere. Bees said very little. They used their wings to buzz a few simple words like nectar, sun, and hive. Frogs spend much of their time searching for each other. One would croak, where are you? I can't see you. And then the other would reply, I'm over here. Follow my voice. When Roz first stomped across the island, the animal squawks and growls and chirps had sounded like nothing more than meaningless noise. But she no longer heard animal noises. Now she heard animal words. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Tune in next week. We'll do chapters 21 through 26 or so. And I hope you guys have a great week. Bye.